What's going on everybody? A couple months back I made a Razer Synapse 3 tutorial video. It was an overall video on how to use all the features in Razer Synapse 3. One thing I didn't include in that video because it was such a new feature and I was still brand new to it was the audio meter feature. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to use it and get you guys adding more depth into your keyboard lighting designs. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you guys like the video. Let's get right into it. All right guys, here we go with audio meter. So when audio meter first came out, I found it very difficult to use and I just wouldn't see my keyboard lighting sometimes. And I just found it very complicated. So my goal is to help you guys understand how to use it and that way you guys can use it in your custom keyboard lighting profiles. For now, I'm just gonna kind of skip the uh, color aspect of it, the gradient meter, and I'm just gonna look at the properties for now. These settings here are going to change based on how you like to listen to the audio that's on your PC. Each situation is going to be very different. So initially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the colors to be just a rainbow color just as kind of like our uh, sample piece. A lot of people when they try to use this they have an issue with seeing the lighting with the audio. The majority of the time the issue is going to be in the program that you're creating that audio from. For example I have iTunes pulled up here and I'm just going to start playing some music. If you look at my music volume here in iTunes you can see it's down really low that is why you're not picking up on a lot of the audio so if I were to hit play you can see that my keyboard lighting is just staying at the red zone here at the very bottom of my gradient you can see here on the left you have your low volumes and on the right you have your high volume uh, colors and you can see that this is not changing off of red at all. On your system tray here, this audio does almost nothing to this audio meter. You can change this up as loud as you want, put it on 100, it's not going to change it off of that red. So this right here in the system tray, this volume does absolutely nothing for increasing the lighting. It all has to do with the program that is creating the audio. Turn my iTunes up. You'll notice that, so I recommend that if you are using a profile that has audio meter on it, whatever program you're using to create that audio is maxed out or at 100. And then you can just adjust the volume with your master volume here. Another way of increasing the lighting for your audio meter if you didn't want it maxed out is this first feature right here. It's a boost. This kind of boosts your lighting effects on your keyboard for the current audio that you have or volume. So if you improve this up a little bit, this will slowly get you to these higher ranges of color, but nothing's going to affect it more than the program that is actually creating the audio. So to reach these high spikes up here to high, the higher ends of your audio, if you have your boost all the way up and you have your program all the way up, you're going to reach those higher audio spikes. I like to have my iTunes on 100 and I like to bring this down all the way or even keep this on auto. If you keep it on auto, it's going to find that sweet spot. So what decay does is it is the speed at which your lighting effect dissipates after hearing an audio cue. So if you have this maxed out and an audio, a piece of audio plays, it's going to go to the lighting and it's slowly going to drift out to black. You can see how long it takes to drift out to black. Whereas if you have your decay all the way down, and you have an audio cue, it's gonna, it's gonna drift out much faster. You see how fast it goes down to the low point. It gets to red really quickly. Whereas if it's maxed out, it takes a while to get back down to that red zone. 
Now that we've explained how you can see your audio meter, I'm going to get into a little bit of the color gradients and how you can customize some lighting with it. So I've zoomed in a little bit here and I'm going to show you guys how you can create a custom audio visualizer. I'm going to select my bottom row here and I'm going to click on my color gradient and I'm actually going to delete this very last one because we don't need that one on the end for the high spikes. So here we have six nodes in our color gradient and I'm going to make these all just one color. So here for my bottom row, you can see on my color gradient, I have all of my dots are red. Okay. And to kind of create a custom audio visualizer effect, your bottom row is going to light up as soon as it begins to hear audio. So as soon as your audio begins to play, no matter what volume it's at, it's going to light up here on the bottom. Go to our second row and we'll paste that same effect in there. And what we're gonna change is we're going to make this invisible initially. And when your audio increases up to this point right here, as it gets a little bit louder, your second level is going to come on. So you just keep doing this as you go up. The higher your volume gets, the more rows that start to light up. So I'm gonna copy the second row and I'm going to paste it into the third row, make it invisible and just slide that over. I'm gonna copy this third row, paste it into this fourth one, make another one invisible, copy that, paste it, make it invisible, slowly go up. Copy that, paste it, make it invisible and slowly go up. And that'll be my last little section right there. So now you can see if we play the audio, we have something similar to an audio visualizer, although it's very linear. As of right now, the audio meter doesn't have adjustments for frequencies, but that's how you get uh, an audio visualizer is it goes off of different frequencies. I'm gonna show you one more thing that I like to do with audio meter on some of my designs that enhances the lighting effect immensely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a wave layer real quick and I'm just gonna put a regular rainbow wave and I'm gonna drag my audio meter here on the left up to the top. That way it has priority. And what I like to do sometimes in my designs is I like to take my audio meter and put it over the top of an existing pattern and I'll just do a two node audio meter like this my low volume node or my left node here i like to keep at black so uh, all zeros with a one at the end and the right node i like to make invisible and i'll hit save so at low volumes you don't see the pattern underneath and as the volumes go up and get higher it starts to reveal the pattern that's underneath your audio meter effect. So as you can see, we have our pattern all darked out and at low volumes it gets darker and higher volumes you can see it starts to reveal your pattern quite a bit. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you guys learn a little bit about how to use the audio meter feature in Razer Synapse 3. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you guys know as soon as I upload new keyboard lighting videos. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I often upload teasers of upcoming videos, so make sure you go check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.